views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of Paranormal Buzz Radio or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is strictly prohibited. For information on everything Paranormal Buzz Radio has to offer, visit our website, ParanormalBuzzRadio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to Phantom Science, the podcast, where we discuss how to prove it's not just all in your head. Does the paranormal exist? If it does, how does it work? And how do we gather solid indications and data? During this podcast, we will be discussing things that many people may hold near and dear to themselves. If you feel offended at any point, just take a deep breath and think about the thing that offended you. Because we will be playing the role of the recently declawed Office of Devil's Advocate. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And thank you very much for listening. Hello, welcome to Phantom Science with John, Nico, and Shane. I think we're alive. I'm waiting for backup in the chat. This is Shay. Hey, John, Nico, Shane, how you doing? We're doing well, apart from the demonic infestation of our waves. <laughs> you should have yeah. known better to do this subject. I want my PC back. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> I- I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm looking. I'm hoping. Aaron's saying yes. Yes, what? Yes. Sounds good. All right. Sounds Ooh. good. All right. So I'm going to leave the show, guys. And um, uh, John, message me a minute or two before you want to end the show. All righty. Oh, you're not going to be listening? I could just say it live. I am, but I'm going to be, once <laughs> I leave the live show, I'm going to be behind you. That's, that's my that's my story, and I'm sticking it. I'm sticking to it. Uh, caught you there. Caught yeah. you there. No, I, I, once I leave the live show, the the people in chat are behind. So I have tons of questions. I'll be putting them in chat. Don't worry. Right to that. Okay. Well, let's crack on. Just show, when you think the show's over, don't say anything until you hear me say we're out. <laughs> when I say right. we're out, then say whatever you want before that. <laughs> Be nice. It's all over. <laughs> yes. All right. Here you go. Here's your host of the show. Here's Phantom Science. Enjoy demonic possession. Good evening and welcome to our cursed show this evening. Ah. <laughs> um. So, demonic possession. Um. Always a fun subject. Uh, <laughs> talking kindergartens across the world. Uh, so I guess. Our question is, well, it came up on somehow on last week's show, we started talking about it, so we figured, well, let's, talk, let's devote a whole show to it. Um, since this is take three, um, I'll start again at the beginning. Um, so, here's the thing. Demonic possession for me has always been like the big media headline, and the, you know, the one that people get interested in, and, uh, you know, well, they make films out of so, I, I mean, we've never had a film about orbs. So, <laughs> I guess, Shane, what's your take? <clears throat> well, uh, I ride the fence right on the middle for this show because, uh, uh, like, I have a friend that has had personal experiences with it. And um, so that's, you know, that's the thing. And, and then I've got skeptical friends that are, you know, the whole thing is bunk, and it's just people on LSD and schizophrenia. So I'm right in the middle in this one tonight. Yeah, and Nico. Oh, like I said before, um, I don't, I don't know anyone personally that's been involved in it like Shane has, so I can see the struggle there. Um, I personally think it's something that can be explained if examined closely enough, looked at right. But like I said, I've never had a personal experience or someone close to. To actually properly look into it like that, so that's kind of where I lie. 
sometimes things are different when you actually know someone who's going through it, or maybe you have the chance, you know, first person. What about you? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I didn't believe in it till we started this show. <laughs> I never think it could go wrong. Did go wrong. Um, for me, it's it's religion. I mean, it, it's a faith thing. So, you know, um, I'm not religious, but people that are religious, for them it's true, and that's fine. Therefore, for them, demons do exist. But uh, I, 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 and we'll talk more in depth about this later. I mean, right. for me, strategically, they don't make sense. I mean, I understand where they fit historically, I understand where they fit as far as monotheism goes in, in, in the narrative of religions, but if they were real and really were foot soldiers of the devil, they're doing a piss poor job, you know, so I don't know. Um, That's something I've always struggled with too. Like, you know, when we first talked about are ghosts real and why, it's always been a huge question for me, why? You know, same thing with possession. Why would a ghost stick around and throw a book across the room? Or what? Why? And he's reading it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I throw it enough times, it'll land on the page where I left off. <laughs> I, <laughs> but you're very right. I mean, I, I side with you on that. Why? If they really were possessing people just to, I don't know what. And, well, and, and that's open to interpretation, too. I mean, I could argue against myself all day with that one, too. But shame. I mean, so let's start with, let's go at it from this angle. If, let's say, they are real. So what are your thoughts on, A, how they work, and B, what their goal is, you know, why they do what they do? Well, how they work, um, of course, you know, especially if you're a Christian, would be, uh, it's either Satan himself or a demon from Satan, uh, you know, a fallen angel, if you want to call it that, however you want to say it. And, of course, they possess people because they want to pull them into hell and they don't want us to make it to heaven. So that would be the Christian interpretation of it. Um, I did find a science article quote in science in quotes um where during a exorcism one of the demons actually said that they were made of ions and related particles <laughs> so you know that seems like a very strange thing for a person to just blurt out so, I don't know. Anyways, uh, there's the start. <laughs> I mean, I, I have one thing to say about that, because there are some mental disorders when not treated correctly or got out of hand can cause people to even talk different languages. I mean, so it's kind of not that crazy that something like that would be said to me. Anyway. Well, we were watching, there was a, um, a psychiatrist on, on one of the TED Talks, actually, we were watching it today doing research, and there are schizophrenics that show, have different physical responses when, and there are noted cases where one personality will have diabetes and their glucose levels and that shoot up, and when the other personality is at the front, suddenly they're not diabetic anymore, or there's also cases where one personality they have hives, they break out hives, and then when the other personality is there, the hives go away. So, you know, we know that our brains have the uh, the automatic stuff like heartbeat breathing, you know. So, I mean, if if it's a if it's if it's a brain problem, could those could it be affecting parts of the brain that normally auto adjust your body. Or if it's a demon, is it a demon that is punishing you by afflicting your body? If you see what I mean. Yeah. Totally. Well, I mean I guess Every, one thing, everyone's just reading the holy loop, aren't they? That's what they <laughs> yeah. I saw it, that was great. Um, so the other thing is is I guess 
I mean, at some point you might need to bring in, you know, the laws of physics. I mean, you know, there are cases where, you know, they had a 90 pound female. It took four adult males to hold her down. I don't think any type of mind could give a person that small, that much strength. I mean, this girl was like a, a teenager and she was literally, literally able to throw a 200 pound male against the wall. No matter what your brain does, you don't have that kind of strength. Yeah, but there's also reports of mothers lifting cars to, you know, pull their kids out from under it. I mean, yeah, I guess. It goes both ways. It really does. And that's the problem. It, it really is a matter of fact. You know, I, I guess is the thing. is You have a unnatural, well, I don't know how you look at it, but it, it seems unnatural, something happening. You know, someone being stronger than they should, or, you know, they're hurting themselves. Um, you know, and they're speaking in weird voices and stuff like that, contorting. And, and, you know, so you can look at it from both angles, and, you know, depending on how or what you believe in, both will be right. Does that make sense? Because you're looking at two certain films. If, you, if you're looking at it and saying, that's not natural, that can't be anything but a demon because I know demons are real. And this is what demons do. Does that make sense? So, yeah, sure. You know, and then someone who doesn't believe in demons is looking at that going, well, the brain's really a weird thing. Look at all the things it can do, you know, when it, when it goes out of whack. So, yeah. Well, and here's an interesting thing. Uh, there is a, a uh, psychiatrist uh, Dr. Richard Gallagher, he's actually an Ivy League uh, educator from the Columbia University, and he also works for the New York Medical College. He is actually a lot of times called in for exorcisms, especially when it isn't going well. And, you know, and he's actually a lot of times assigned the physician during the exorcism and a lot of the physical functions that he's seeing are at the edge of or not even possible for humans to do without already being dead or, you know, I mean, some of the sound levels that these people can make, you know, like especially like a female that can't even, you know, their vocal cords should not theoretically even be able to go that low of a sound. <laughs> or you know just all kinds of stuff but you know he he is a he is a physician phd level physician that works for you know a university and also you know for the you know new york medical college so and he's saying he's seeing things from a physician and a psychiatrist point of view that he can't p p place in science completely mm -hmm. you go that's crazy that is absolutely good. I mean, so when you when you kind of bring that up, it does make you wonder what is going on. You know what I mean? Is there something to it? Because you, like you said, we, you can go both ways, but you have an actual trained physician who, you know, teaches, and he's seeing things that are kind of making him shift the way. You know, he should be able to kind of explain those things, you would think. Well, science does know everything. That's the first thing most scientists would tell you. But, I mean, yeah. So, once again, looking at it through whichever filter you're looking at, you know, that is a good um, thing to throw out, saying, look, this is, if not proof, then very strong inference yeah. that possession is real. You know, but on the other hand, if you do not believe in demons, that is very strong inference that, hey, there's a lot more weirder things going on than we understand. You know, let's see what, what's making them do that. I, that's my problem with demons. And then if we go back to something that, you brought up, okay, this, this goes back to, so <clears throat> this is my problem with demons and, and, and it's why it's like, what's the point is, so, you know, their aim is to possess you and take your soul to hell. Is, is that correct? I, I mean, that's the consensus. Yeah, um, stop you from going to hell. Make you do bad things. Yeah, it's, you go I'm not hell. so sure it's, you know, pulling your, quote, soul to hell, but basically... Anything, you know, they're, you know, the view is 
the, the, that the fallen angels slant demons are jealous of, you know, what God gave to the humans. And so any point that they can torture them, cause them troubles, ruin their life, do whatever, that's their goal in the world. That's how, world I, already that's how I interpret that it, at least from a Christian point of view. So, and that's what, you know, I've seen a lot of in articles, etc. So they, so they possess you to, and sorry, what's their actual aim in capture? <clears throat> their aim is to make humans miserable and also, you know, if they can prevent you from going to heaven and having, you know, eternal life, etc., whatever that, that entails, mm -hmm. that is their goal. You know they want to bring they want to bring humans down to their level basically. Well, now here's here's at least for me the hole in that theory is so if I get possessed and I do bad things, you know, I, I get a free pass because it's not me doing it. That's entrapment. That is that is correct. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's fact, entrapment. Even humans don't. When you know, when you're higher people. power, no, in that kind of a deal. So it's all pointless. They bring misery. But they don't actually really gain a soul, I don't think. It's possible. Now, I know, you know, I'm, I'm not a Catholic, but I know a lot of the, the Catholic faith uh, people, they typically, if someone does or commits, you know, a crime or something like that, and the diocese determines that that guy or, or lady where it was, quote, you know, possessed in a real way, they basically, as far as the church is concerned, will erase that, quote, sin from their world. So, you know, what you said was, you know, has some, some teeth to it, especially, you know, in the Catholic faith. Yeah, and the other, the, well, and this is true on the other lens looking at it, if you're a skeptic, if someone does these things, and we say, oh, well, they're not in their correct mind state, that's also a free pass. I mean, you know, you can, you can plead mental instability and not stand trial. Yeah. You know, so it, it's the same. That's what I mean. It's the same thing from both lenses. It's just, you know, what it is, if you see what I mean. So you kind of get a free pass either way. Um, and that's, you know, so I, once again, you know, I never saw... I understand what demons are for as far as theology goes, because if you, we used to have like uh, pagan religions and Egyptians, and, you know, it was polytheism for, you know, time and memorial. And, you know, if you had bad crops, then all oh, that's that God's fault. And, you know, if, if you drowned, it was that God's fault. When you go to a monotheistic religion where it's an all powerful one God, Suddenly, they had the problem of, well, wait a minute, we got blaming for the bad things too, not just the good things. <laughs> so then, every monotheistic religion then has a sidekick in, you know, as in, oh, well, here's one that doesn't get on with him, and and there you go, that that gives birth to demons and you know um, stuff like that. So I understand, you know, the mechanic of a demon. It's just that if it was true, uh, put it this way: you won't want me to be the devil because. The tactics will be totally different, you know. Yeah, he would be the devil, devil's advocate. <laughs> uh, well, is it, is it? Actually, but but the thing is, the devil's supposed to be God's advocate in in the in God's prosecutor. If you read a lot of theologians, will, will say, well, the devil's not really evil because God wouldn't allow him to exist if he was. So, you know, what the devil's just there to test people to make sure they're good enough to get in heaven. That's one take on the devil. But if that's true. Once again, demonic possession, what's the point? I've never understood that. You know? Well, here's, here's an interesting thing. Um, there's another uh, physician, uh, a Dr. Jeffrey Lieberman. He's a psychiatrist who specializes in schizophrenia. And evidently, he's gotten a few patients in for MRIs. And he says, according to the MRI scans and... Um, these people exceeded things that their neurobiology and uh, his psychological theories couldn't even come up with. I mean, basically, when they stuffed this person in the machine, the thing just literally 
couldn't even interpret what was going on. Mm. Wow. So, you know, that's yeah. like, that's out there. Yeah, it makes you question. So here's, here's, here's one to throw at it. So if we take away, if we say, okay, possession happens, we've seen these things, you know, people being stronger than they should be, uh, making noises that their throat couldn't possibly make, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what makes us say that it's a demon? I mean, why couldn't it be some kind of other entity? You know, a fifth dimension, sixth dimension entity, or a ghost, or, you know, something else. Yeah. That, that, you know, I, I guess I, I'm just vocalizing why I have a problem yeah, you know the demonic thing. It's kind of the same thing we're going through right now with the anomalies that we have been discovering. Who says it's a ghost? We don't really know. So I kind of get where you're coming from. Who says it's a demon? You know, why, why does it automatically fit that? And I think that that has a lot to do with mainstream media and religion more than you know people actually thinking it through, actually asking why. I said so. I mean, there's a lot of scapegoaters in in it too. I mean, uh, you know, some people, you know, they'll say, well, you know, I'm an alcoholic or, you know, stuff like that. And then they'll, you know, they'll, yeah. they'll blame it on, you know, if, if they want to look it through that lens. So. There are reported cases of people doing it <laughs> for uh, attention and for popularity, you know, attraction lines. So that's a big deal too. I mean, like you said, there is, there's that offset, uh, that part of it. The son of Sam, uh -huh. the son of Sam, the serial killer, he blamed his murders on his neighbor's dog. It was possessed by a demon telling him to go out and shoot random people. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, I heard about that. I saw yeah, that. so, you know, that's a, well, that's, a, that's a fair question, though. Can animals be possessed? According to the Bible, they can be, because Jesus put them into pigs. So, you know... What do you? What I don't get is why is that such a big thing? Why do people get stuck on that? Like there are mental disorders where people literally see like their mothers telling them to kill people, or their dad telling them to kill their child. But a dog talking to someone with a disorder is a big deal. Why? Well, cause, probably because he killed like eight people plus. Yeah. <laughs> that just means you're <laughs> good. You know, that's just a roll of the dice. So I. I you know, I, I do I think it's possible for someone to be possessed? Yeah, why not? I mean, we're getting close to it now where we can control brain waves and, and stuff like that. So if you extrapolate that idea to where you could, if we, let's say we figure out what consciousness is and then you overlay another consciousness on there, you know, why isn't, I think that's, you know, I think that's possible. Um, but, you know, and, and that comes down to power of the mind. I mean, how many how many people have pretended they were sick and actually got sick from pretending they're sick? I know tons oh, of people. Oh, yeah, that happens. That's I've happened and that's, yeah, to me and myself, you know, I mean, so you have a different personality where there's been studies on this. Like you brought up earlier, people literally have issues that don't exist when the other personality is in control. So why is that so unbelievable? Well, we're talking about possession. We're talking about an external force yeah. actually taking control of you. So, I mean, you're right, though, because if, if you've got a religious person that, that has bad thoughts and has a mental issue or depression, why have you not suddenly latching onto the idea of demons? You're right. You know, yeah. someone who you thinks they're sick becomes real. sick. Someone who thinks they're possessed, could they become possessed? Or, you know, I don't know. It's... it's out there. I, I have a family member who thinks all the stuff that's been going on in the world lately is the, the coming, the end of the world, the Armageddon. She, she cries about it. She's like, oh, the devil's coming, it's here, COVID and storms and everything shut down the world. And that she believes in it so hard because that's how she was raised. She really believes that it's the end of the world and she's scared. But she's old, you know? <laughs> so much. Yeah, but you're. You know, I've always wondered. You know, these people that walk around with those those billboards that say the end is nigh, <laughs> the end of the world. Is, no, really, and they believe that, and they wander around with that. Don't you ever think that they look around and say, 
my God, everybody's so calm. These are the kind of people I want in a tight situation. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're just chilling. You know, it's like, you know, the world's coming. Oh, oh, I'm in mean, a sign. So, and, and, this, and the thing is, this is a tough subject because we are talking about religion and some people, you know, get offended, you know, when you talk about religion and stuff. So I'm trying to. Yeah, but the goal is to get you to think about it a different way. Well. Just stop and think, wow. But you can't because then, because that's your faith. So you can't think of it a different way. I'm just, that's why I'm trying to come at it from both lenses, if you know what and I mean. And it's tough for people to kind of leave that at the door. You yeah. Know? Like, okay, let me just. See if I can change my mind. But you know, so okay, so here's doing the research. Um, so the exorcism amount is going up at an exponential rate lately, um, especially in the southern hemisphere of the globe, so South America and Africa, especially. Um, and one article that I read, which was quite interesting. It's apparently the Pentecostal church is really big into that. So now the Catholics to keep up are training more exorcists and therefore doing more exorcisms, it seems. So I don't know. I mean, that's just what I read. But do you, why do you think, chat room two, why do you, and Shay, that's a good question. How about non religious possession? We'll get to that. But why do you think that um, exorcisms are going up at such a Dramatic rate change. Well, um, I guess if you were to look at it from a Christian point of view, as you get closer to the end times, the demonic activity should be going up. So if you're a Christian, and that's the way it would show up, so that you would expect as you get closer and closer to Armageddon and the end time, you should be getting more and more demon possession, which would equal more and more exorcisms. Because that's literally exactly what I was going to say, bringing up my, my family member again. That's, you know, apparently the closer it gets to the end of times, the more you're going to see a rise in that chaos, and then that would be kind of a deal. I don't know. It fits to the to the religious point of view. Yeah. But as for scientifically, why? Um, I don't really know. Why? Because why would it change? Television. Yeah. Well, TikTok. I believe TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, television and, and uh, social media. The TikTok position. The TikTok position. 30 seconds, go. Right. Hey, with the mouth. Know. Got 30 seconds. I don't know. If I think about it tactically, you know, if it really is a war, good versus evil, and you get more demons at the end, that, that's like saying, well, let's hold back all the troops until the last 10 minutes of the battle. You know, well, by then you've already lost the battle. So, you know, committing them right at the end. And I don't know, usually that's when you throw in your reserves because you've got fuck all left. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I don't know. But, I, 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 you know, once again, I, if it's not apparent, I lean on it from the atheist viewpoint of, I'm not saying possessions don't happen, I just have a problem with the demon handle, you know. Uh, I think if they do happen, it's nowhere near a high number as they, they're claiming. Because I do believe that I do believe that the treatment itself, the actual exorcism itself, I, placebo effect is strong. I, I really think that people who are religious or that's another part I have an issue with too is for an exorcism to work, usually you have to they say you have to believe in God, you have to accept that faith into your heart for it to actually work. So if people are really that bad and they're they're starting to go down that path. Is it a lot of placebo effect? Is it, is it you know, the mind cure in itself? I mean, if it broke itself, is the placebo fixing? Uh, and then, you know, so like I said, I feel like if possession is real, the numbers are a lot lower than what they're actually claiming. Yeah, I would bet that if possession is real, that, you know, probably more than half the people that are possessed try to hide it as much as they can and try not to talk to anybody just out of fear of shun and societal pressure. Yeah, I mean, that would be a tough thing to bring up or even start to research. I mean, put well, yourself in their shoes. How would you feel? The possessed people in the Bible, for example, were reported to live in tombs, which means they were separate from society. And also, uh, I believe it's the Vatican also said, you know, the people that come up and say, you know, I'm possessed, can you help me? 
usually that's a red flag to them because they see if a true demon is possessing you, it's not going to seek out a priest and try and get a, try and get an exorcism. So, right. you know, I, I guess that's. But that being said, another cardinal, um, I don't crap with names, also then put forward the idea that yes, but if they are possessed, they're not always a hundred percent under the control. Of what yeah, I was going to say that because yeah. typically the the view is if you're a Christian again, going from their viewpoint, your free will cannot be taken by the demon. So it would be possible for a human to go to a priest. Now it might be you know they can take over mind and other issue you know other things like that, but your free will they're theoretically not supposed to be able to take over. So if you're persistent enough, you should be able to go get help. Yeah. So, you know, and that, to, to me, that's interesting. Uh, there's a, we were, so Mama did say uh, the Vatican changed guidelines in 2014 to have more trained trees performing. They do, which is the point I brought up earlier in that, you know. I'm and not only if, did they, they change the guidelines, but one of the guidelines now is, they basically have to see it get verified by a physician first as to not have schizophrenia or any of the other, you know, 10 different mental illnesses before yeah, the priest can start. <coughs> that would make sense to me. That, to me, that's a, that has, that's a given. You have yeah, actually, to that was added rule in all of the things out. Yeah, that's when they changed the whole thing. Yep, the last time it been changed before that was 1600s or something. So yeah, 1614. <laughs> That's it. Oh, wow. oh, and then you go to 1999. It's like, uh, yeah, well, we're not going <laughs> to. Maybe yeah. we should update that. So. That's crazy. You know, and it's, it's you know, it's it's a tough one for me because I, I am cynical of people most of the time, people's motives. I always look for motives. So when, when someone's doing that, I mean, there, there was a, um, the guy that's training them or was training them in Mexico City. The priest, he'd done like six six thousand exorcisms. I was thinking, my God, there can't really be that many. Well, who was the guy we were watching today? He said he did like two to three a week or something. Yeah, yeah. and then he said he had to he had to schedule or work or something as to it not to get in the way of his other priorities. <laughs> but, I mean, if physicians grew, what what other priorities would you have? <laughs> That's what he said. I know. It's so sorry, I can only fit in three this week. Uh, <laughs> gotta take my kids to soccer practice, gotta do some blessings. <laughs> Baptism of four. <laughs> I hate babies. No, <laughs> wedding, day <dang> weddings. <laughs> that one's not gonna last. <laughs> I wonder if priests actually think that. <laughs> well, they're not gonna last. Probably. <laughs> but I mean, you know, if, if <laughs> I, I, I you know, once again, I look at the motivation, and if it was real, okay, I mean, well, I'd be going after the big guys, you know, not someone that was, you know, somewhere in a mud hut in Kenya. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, what kind of resource wastage is that? I've got X amount of demons running around, I want to use the, you know, the maximum thing. So, you know, and if I'm going to do it, then, you know, uh, I'd, I'd grab a soldier that's got a gun and just make him open up in the marketplace or something like that, you know, it, it just... I don't, I don't get that just me, though, put the thinking in maybe when I'm sitting there in my cherry, my Cheetos, I think of many things. So. I see what you mean, though. Why isn't it on a higher scale? Why is it simpler stuff, you know? So, I mean, I mean, a lot of the cases are specifically to the body itself. That's it, the one person. Why wouldn't it be more drastic? You know? I don't know. I mean, well... Go ahead. Yeah, so when I was doing some of the research here, I found that uh, there's a, a Dr. Neil Martin. He's a neurosurgeon at UCLA. And this is in 2015. He actually was at a live exorcism, and he wrote notes in his medical journal. And I've got the short quote here. I could probably just read it real quick. Yeah. So his notes say, it's absolutely amazing. There's a major force at work within her somehow. I don't know the underlining origin of it. She's not separated from the environment. She's not in a catatonic state. 
She's responding to the priest and is aware of the context. The energy she shows is amazing. The priest on the right is struggling to control her. He's holding her down, as are the others, and the sweat is dripping off his face at a time when she's not even sweating. This doesn't seem to be a hallucination. She appears to be engaged in the process of resisting. You can see she has no ability to pull herself back. Those are his actual medical notes that he mm-hmm. took during an exorcism. So it's just interesting that uh, you know a, a, a chief neurosurgeon at UCLA would actually put that in his notes. Once again, that's strong evidence, you know, from both lenses again, though, you know, and, and that's, it's, you know, there's lots of inference, there's lots of stuff like that, but, you know, the, to me, you know, the root cause, what is it, you know, it's, it's, it's a, you know, we, we, we don't know, we don't know, we do know, both sides know, if you know what I mean, so, yeah. um, I, I I just grapple with it, especially the Hollywood versions. <laughs> oh yeah, those are silly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, imagine I I always every time I see the exorcism of Emily Rose, <laughs> when her boyfriend yeah. wakes up and she's like in that spider position, just staring at him, I'd be like, "Nice knowing you." Oh my word! Um, where else did we want to go with this? So, yes, um, Shane brought up a question earlier, that's what we get to. Which um, Mars, let me get back to it. I can... Yeah, there's trains all over the place here. I thought it was the same time. Bringing corn to the masses. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. How about non religious possession? So, here's the thing when I looked, I'm not saying there isn't any. But I couldn't find any non-religious possessions. Well, I mean, I'm sure that there, like you said, there isn't any. But it, I mean, if it's a way lower number, I'm not gonna lie. When I looked into it, have looked into it in the past episodes too. I did not find any. That was something that I thought about. What about you, Shane? Yeah, I didn't find anything specifically on that, but yeah, I don't know. So it seems to me the lesson of this to ward yourself from possession and become an atheist. Oh, no, really. I mean, no, I know. I know. I'm, yeah, I'd yeah, say I, flippantly. I know where some, you're some people are probably going to take that bad taste. Yeah. But, yeah, I didn't mean it that taste. the plank on that one. Yeah, this is the same spot for this type of conversation. You're here to listen and learn. But I mean, it's freedom in conversation. That struck me, though. You know, that there was, I could find no evidence of. You know, non-religious possession. So, you know, do, wouldn't that doesn't that mean something? Don't you think? I mean, um, well, uh, uh, yeah, you know, like this man that's done six thousand of them. Uh, the other guy that's doing so many a week. You know, if there's that many and not one case of non-religious. Yeah. And you know what? You'd think the way the media is nowadays, that would be a big deal. Don't you think someone would would really make that front line with like atheists? Had to have an entity. Uh You know what I mean? It would be in there. That would be like their prime example. This man was saved. He didn't accept our religion, and he had to for it to work, and now he's saved. That would be the front line thing, if that doesn't sound too mean. But don't you know what I mean? Don't you think they'd put that right up front? Mm, not necessarily. And I guess I mean, the from a religious is, point of view, if you were someone who really, you know, believed in all that and who were heavily religious, and someone who wasn't actually got saved from a demon because they chose to believe, they changed their faith. Yeah, I, that could happen, I guess. But I think that'd be a big deal. See, the other thing is, is it's probable that if you're an atheist and you're having these strange issues and problems and things you would fight with everything you had to not let it be a religious thing or not let it be a demon or whatever just because if you if you were to admit it or to do anything about it now you're admitting that you know your atheism is bunk you were wrong which is very hard for people to do 
it goes both ways. And, and so they would just hide it forever and until, you know, and then maybe they do go out and kill somebody or, you know, do something crazy. And they had it all along. They were possessed, but they wouldn't say or do anything. And or, so they just were hidden. Dog. <laughs> just yeah. or, or blame it on something else. Yeah. And chihuahuas. So, but the argument could go the other way too. What if, what if you know the demon or the devil or whatever Satan used something that the atheist wouldn't suspect? What if it used an animal or a child or it could, uh, a, a, you know, a, a, a mirage? I think I'd suspect if a dog started talking to me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but would you yeah. blame demon or would you just think? Well, to him? and the other thing too is a dog. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> know. <laughs> If you're an atheist and things are happening to you like that, you're going to go to a psychiatrist. If you are a Christian or some faith-based person, you're going to go to your priest or whatnot. So the psychiatrist is going to be like, oh, you just got this disease. This is your problem. Take these pills and see you next week. The priest is going to say, oh, yeah, you got some problems. We need an exorcism. We're going to start going down that line. So, you know, a lot of it might get hidden in that way. Although the, there is records and quite quite a few records of atheists becoming religious after a near death experience, so true. You know, that's true. I well, and, there, know, and there's also you know atheist psychiatrists that have converted to the faith because of things that they saw in their patients. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I actually this is a tough one. I'm glad we're kind of trying to grapple it, but yeah. I mean, to me, it's it's a lens that you look through. I mean, you, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying it's not they're not paranormal. Some of them, some of them really are. You know, from like what Shane's presented, you know, like notes of you know PhDs and everything, and, and eyewitnesses. And um, there was I can't remember I'm crap with names, but I should I should really make notes. But for example, there was an exorcism where there's 170 eyewitnesses saw, saw the person levitating. Um, so, you know, there are things out there. I, I just, you know, I just leave off the demonic myself personally, just because I, I don't think that's proven. You know, yeah. and, and the, the the word demonic to me brings it way back into brings it into you know superstition and, and faith based and, and from there, you're not going to try and understand it because you already know, if you know what I mean. So, and if you already know, you're not going to learn. So, to me, you know, I think possession is a thing. Um, I just choose to leave off the demonic part. And if it turns out to be a demon, you know, um, well, I'm bugged. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. Which is good. No, I don't know. Because if I did know, I'd stop looking. Well, in, in personal experiences are very strong. I mean, look, look at all of us with, with the uh, paranormal investigating. We have that same question in front of us. It makes you want to go out and do it and be a part of it. It makes you want to be the person in the room seeing it firsthand. I don't want to go out and get possessed just to see what No. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's right, start my weekend at the boat three and we go. Let's go out. <laughs> Once upon a time. Yeah. You know, you didn't believe in ghosts. And now we're like, we, we see these anomalies. And what is this? It makes you want to dive in, you know? Well, no, it's, I mean, we're seeing inferences of external force, and which is why I'm saying I don't debunk possession. I, I just have trouble with that demonic label, you know? So, <laughs> no D. What's no D? <laughs> Who's got no D? <laughs> Hey, 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 we're out. <laughs> I'm just reading the chat. I'm sorry. This is, this is not the voices in my head. <laughs> no. I, here, here's the thing. So, uh, and it's not, I mean, we're talking here from a Western culture point of view as well, from, from a Christian based thing. Um, now, you can talk about the jinn, which is Muslim, Eastern. Um, cultural influence and then if you know you can go back you can look at the Hebrew versions of possessions you know, which is pretty Christian and, and they're there and, and so it's one of these things and, and the Sumerians even had possession so you know you can go back through time and still get 
you know. I mean, even, and, and it's not always negative either, because, you know, Shaman used to let themselves get possessed by all kinds of stuff just to find answers and get going, you know. So, you know, I, I, what do you think? Somebody jump in, save me, I'm packing it. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, your point of possession being a thing, but not necessarily demons, um, has some merits. Uh, a lot, quite a few of the, you know, the very big uh, known uh, exorcisms, etc. Some of these people were actually blurting out loud secrets and unknown things to them about even the people that were doing the exorcism. So, you know, maybe it's spirits from other people, you know, I mean, the same thing we would call ghosts causing some of it too. I mean, I don't know, but the fact that in a large percentage that they can actually speak things that they don't have any idea and they could have never known, you know, like childhood secrets from some yeah. of the people doing the exorcism, etc. So it's like they have some kind of outside, outside of time, abilities or out you know or the ability to read the minds of the people doing the exorcism yeah well and that's well it used to be what is it um so magic is banned by most religions for reasons two reasons one is divination trying to figure out what god has planned is blasphemous so divination magic is bad and then the other one is by doing magic, you are opening a channel, you're channeling and letting in demons and bad things, or at least, you know, that's, that's the theory behind it. So, which is where we get the Ouija board being bad because you're opening channels and yeah. letting things in, which honestly wasn't an issue in the 60s, but, you know, in the 70s onwards it became an issue. Yeah. So, well, it kind of came. I mean, <laughs> Man. Shay needs to be heard. Free the Shay. What'd you say? <laughs> Free the <laughs> Shay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know. So, I'm not sure we got a lot accomplished, but I got, I got a lot of thinking done during yeah. this show. Yeah, I know good about it. I think it yeah, touches it on. Yeah. Yeah. So, it gives you something to think about. And if we piss anyone off, we're sorry. But think about it. <laughs> 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 it's in the intro. <laughs> well, it would be if we had an intro this week. Our intro was on fast forward. <laughs> Demon stole it. <laughs> so, yeah, you're, his computer's possessed. It is. That is kind of funny. You can well, go on possession and get an intro that's like, I, I, I went on a virtual Ouija board with it earlier <laughs> in the day. So, ever since I've been hearing footsteps and rats in the attic. <laughs> so, I mean, so, you know, like Darren said, demons are non living things, which. You know, that's the same in most religions. Dean, demons, they're not, they weren't once people. So, you know, they, they are outside entities, you know, outsiders, as they used to call them. I, I, you know, which, once again, to me, comes back, why? What, what are you they doing? Why that? are they doing it? And they're, they're doing a piss poor job of it, in my opinion. If you're coming at it from that point of view, do they have to comply to our physical world as well? Is there some exception there? Well, I believe, I mean, if you're going to affect anything in that universe, you've got to obey our law of physics, at least as far as we understand. Yeah, yeah I would say they have to obey the rules, at least as far as that. As far as and they do, know. if they're throwing things across the room and causing the room to heat up and, you know, sulfur smell and every other kind of thing, they're, they're playing by our game. Yeah. So, you know, to interact, you have to use the rules of physics. It's yeah. just... I mean, that's the rules. You can't break the rules even if you're a demon. Because <laughs> I said so. So, well, so did Newton and a couple other people that are a lot cleverer than me. Um, so, all right. So, we're going to go around. <laughs> um, any last thoughts as we go around? Getting ready to shut down the demonic ape show? <laughs> no, I think we covered it. I think we did a pretty good job tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, happy. I, I like this. I, I like this. Well, I'm going to click on like myself. Uh, really. All right, like <laughs> yourself. I do. You'll go blind <laughs> doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny you should say that. Every famous person has a sex tape, and I've just released mine. <laughs> oh, 
And as long as it doesn't involve Cheetos, we're all good. <laughs> I just can't get anybody else to join in, so it's just me. <laughs> oh. I am now officially famous. I have the sex tape. <laughs> Put the yeah, it's tape. filled with EVPs, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, well, <laughs> the, the thing is, um, I'm hoping to get it sponsored by Cheetos <laughs> and get the big stream burst. Uh, so that's, that's, you know, we're, we're in discussion. Um, they're, they're talking to my people. We're having lunch. Anyway, so wrap this up before it gets any bloody worse. <laughs> any last thoughts? Nope, I'm done thinking. All right. Anybody from the chat room that can still? <laughs> All righty, chaps. Well, thank you very much for listening. Um, hope it makes you think a little bit. And, uh, you know, uh, next, we'll, we'll think of what we're going to do next week. So um, hopefully you'll join us next week for some more um, musings. <laughs> and uh, yeah. until then, Go ahead, find me a ghost, bring me some evidence, and watch my tape. <laughs> oh. Good night. Oh my.